Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Madrid Ball. I hope you all are doing good. Today in this video, we would be starting the player analysis series, and this is how we are going to do things. We will be discussing one or two player in each video. We'll talk about how they performed, the memorable moments they had during the course of the season, what were the positives, what were the negatives, and then we would be putting them into three categories, and those categories are overperformed, underperformed, and played as per expectations. So those are the times that we would be giving the players at the end of the video and in this series we would be starting from the defense. On today's agenda we have a first choice left back Phil on Mendy and we will talk about how the Frenchman performed during the course of the season. So let's get started. Now starting first with Phil on Mendy the French defender took part in 26 La Liga matches which included 24 starts and two substitute appearances and in the Champions League he played in 11 matches. He was on the pitch for a total of 3170 minutes and and during this time frame, he had two goals, one in the Champions League, one in La Liga, and he did not even register a single assist during the campaign. Now talking more about Mendy, it would be fair to say that he has without any doubt taken over from Marcelo, and rightly so. He had a good first year, especially towards the end of the 2019-20 campaign, he had taken big strides in making the position his very own ahead of Marcelo, so the expectation from Mendy this season was that he would further go on to establish himself as an undisputed starter, and another thing that we needed Mendy to do was improve on his offensive game. So that was the expectation before the season began and now let's talk about how he fared during the course of the season. Mendy was a starter in the side whenever he was fit and talking about the position Zidane used him in, he was majorly played as a left back but as you know this was an injury plague season so there were times when Mendy was played as a right back as well. There were also times where he played wing back or the third centre back role when Zidane switched to the back three so certainly he played multiple positions throughout the season and and to say the truth, he was one of the cornerstones of our defence whenever he was there on the pitch. His defensive game was very good, he's a strong chap, has good upper body strength. Most of the times, he was well positioned to deal with the opposition's attack and in one-on-one -on -one situations as well, you can place a safe bet on Mendy coming out on top. While defending, he has a calm head, he does not make rash challenges and I think one of his best performances this season was the performance against Liverpool. He had the responsibility of containing Mohamed Salah and Trent Alexander Arnold, but Mendy was not at all troubled in both the matches. Neither Salah nor Trent could get the better of Mendy and his role was very important in containing the threat that Liverpool had on the right side of the attack. But now if we talk about the offensive aspect of his game, as we had discussed, he got two goals and zero assists and we can say that we haven't seen him reach the level that we would expect from a Real Madrid left back. Now obviously it is very difficult to replicate the offensive output that Marcelo used to provide us, but going forward, he can do a bit better. His crossing is something that he can improve upon and how many times have we seen Mendy taking a shot from distance only to see it sailing over the top of the bar. There were some good moments though. The goal that he scored against Atalanta away from home was very important in the context of the tie. It was an away goal handing Madrid the advantage and the goal that he scored was an absolute beauty. Real Madrid was struggling to break down Atalanta who were down to 10 men and it felt like Real Madrid would need something special to get the upper hand in the tie and then Madrid got the advantage advantage from one of the most unexpected sources. Ferlon Mendy took a shot far away from goal, he had put the power behind the shot, he put in the curl, the bend was there and it rifled into the back of the net. It was an absolute golazo and this was the phase where Ferlon Mendy was showing some significant improvement in his offensive game. There was also the La Liga match against Getafe where he got the goal from the cross of Marcelo. There was one of the few moments when Marcelo and Mendy both happened to be on the pitch together and we noticed that Mendy had the liberty to make those surprise runs into the opposition's penalty box, which possibly was a ploy of Zidane to catch the opposition off guard. There was also the case of him playing as an inverted fullback. Many times we saw that he used to slot himself in the midfield to give the team extra passing options, but in spite of all of this, I still think he needs to improve on his offensive game. We know the role of fullbacks these days, it's very different from what it used to be before. When you think about attacking football, fullbacks have become key to displaying such a brand. You talk about the time when Marcelo was in his prime, his runs going forward, gave a different dynamic to the team. You talk about the Liverpool duo of Andy Robertson and Trent Alexander
Prince and Arnold. They were an integral part of the side, which was a dominant force in the 2018-19 campaign. You talk about Barcelona, Jordi Alba and Dani Alves. They also formed a very good fullback pairing. And going forward, if Mendy can improve on his offensive game, he can truly develop into a beast of a player. Defensively, I don't see many players doing better than Mendy. But as I said, if offensively he can improve just a little bit more, if he can learn to put in some good crosses, practice a bit of shooting from distance, and if he shows improvement, he can become almost untouchable in the side. The other option for the future can also be Mendy playing as a centre-back. He has done reasonably well playing as a third centre-back in a back three system, and we see many players go through transition during the course of their career. For example, we have seen Winger become a full-back. A classic example is Jesus Navas, and in the case of Alaba, he went from a winger to a left-back to a centre-back, and then a defensive midfielder. So there have been many cases like these, and definitely if Angelotti runs out of options, Mendy can also act as an option to play the centre-back role. And the more a player can offer, the more a player is willing to switch things, be useful in different positions, the better it is for the coach and the better it is for the team. So that is my analysis on Furlong Mendy. And now if we categorise Mendy in one of the three categories available, I would say Mendy performed as per expectations. He was decent and of course there is room to be better. Had he improved going forward, I would have put him in the overperformed category. But overall, he was alright and he met my expectations. So that is my analysis on Furlong Mendy and now it's your time to let me know what did you think about the season of Furlong Mendy. Did he meet your expectations or did he underperform or overperform in your opinion? Let me know in the comments below. I will see you soon with another player analysis video. Till then, take care. Glory to Madrid. And as always, a la Madrid.